Welcome to the Red VTV Instant Reaction, supported by Chapel House Cars for the 2024 season. Following St. Helens' 58 points to nil victory over Hull FC here at the Totally Wicked Stadium this evening. Kevin, I've got nothing to talk about. <laughs> um, yeah, it was a bit of a strange one, wasn't it? Strange atmosphere, um, strange game against a very depleted Hull side. Um, probably hit about par for what you'd expect. Um, and I'm glad we're not coming away from that after only winning by about 20 points, 20 odd points, or even the worst happening. Um, it never looked like it was going to happen like that. It always just looked like we have far, far too much. I think we could have put us in the 13 together and we still would have won. It felt like an opposed training session, didn't it? Opposed in the lightest possible sense. But do you know what? We said in the, in the preview, if we win by 50 tonight... People are going to say it was expected. Unfortunately, that, that that is the case. What I will say is it was professional throughout. Um, we did what we needed to do. Yeah, we did. Um, I mean, keeping them to nil is obviously probably a, a massive thing, keeping that defensive structure that we do. And tonight was about seeing what we could do going forward. Obviously, you have the changes in the spine, which do affect how you play. But as you say, it was professional enough. Um it possibly could have been better, but also it could have gone a lot worse. Yeah, we'll get to the changes first of all. Um, Daryl Clark misses out with a, an injury that he sustained a couple of weeks ago that he's been carrying. Uh, Lewis Dodd um, also carrying a knock, so he missed out. And it meant when we seen the team sheet come out, you were looking at it going, oh, wow, John Benison at fullback, Wellsby in the halves. Um, you see some of the fans on social media celebrating the, lack of, uh, the fact that Dodd's not in the team, and you think... Really? After he's had a really good start to the year, maybe a couple of off weeks like everyone else. Um, it does give us a chance to, to look at different combinations in case you ever need them. But I don't think you can make a judgment on how that looks tonight based off that game against that opposition. No, and we, we said um, when we previewed the game that it isn't about just about tonight, it's about Huddersfield, it's about Hull KR, it's about Castleford, it's about Leeds, whoever's coming up in the next like eight to ten games, it's about getting things right. The things that you can fix up from that, the ball kind of stopped at times. Did we quite get the ball out as wide as we could, especially against a Hull team who were always up against it? Did it get better in the second half? Yeah, it probably did, but is that because Hull are getting tired? Um, go back to the Lewis Dodd thing, I think you can see what our kicking game is. So when people are moaning about Lewis Dodd's kicking game, you can see that we've carried on with pretty much the same thing. Moses and Vi and Johnny Lomax have, have pretty much put the same box type kicks trying to keep Hull contained in so I feel like already you can say well it's not just on Lewis Dodd that that is a coaching and a team decision to do that and you can see tonight how many times Hull FC came up with errors inside their own 20 from doing that and is that what we went away from on Sunday we were trying to force every play rather than getting to the end and trying to do what we're good at and using the defence to force the, uh, the errors and then score off the back of it. Yeah, we keep using the word professional because we were a lot more professional tonight um, and we weren't against Warrington. And I, I hate levelling that at players because I don't necessarily think that... They, well, they don't go out to put a bad performance in or to not perform to their standards. But it did feel like the queue was on the rack against Warrington, whereas tonight we just kept on going and kept on going it, to the point that Jack Wellsby scores in the last couple of minutes um, to kind of put the cherry on top of the win we spoke again on the preview show on the Red View TV show this week uh, we'd have liked to see Noah Stevens come in on the bench and give him some minutes then we seen the team and, and obviously Daryl Clark and Lewis Dodd missing and you, and you just felt has Wello not put him on the bench purely because we've already made we've changed the spine and you don't want to make another unnecessary change um, because obviously if things start going wrong tonight which isn't in hindsight was never going to be the case. You start regretting the decision. In hindsight, Will Wello tends to look back at and think, do you know what, Hull were that bad? You could have potentially made another change or so. But again, is there an eye on next week? Possibly so. I I think that you're right. When I, I'm not a fan of making loads and loads of changes just for making them sake. Obviously, Dodd and Clark have been, well said before the game, that the short turn round meant it's just come a little bit too early. I'd imagine that that's a proper big game they both play in it 
there's no no dramas about that. But put it, not putting Noah Stevens in, yeah, it's only hindsight that you're going to look at it and think, well, we could have. But then if you're trying to make sure that you're getting your players minutes and making sure they right the wrongs of last week or as many of them right the wrongs of last week you've got to kind of put that into context as well and we've heard the name Ben Davis mentioned so many times it obviously looked like a plan that Percy does around about an hour and then comes off and and, and lets Ben have a run out and I think you've got to reward them lads who are kind of the next cabs off the rank and Ben Davis has obviously been that professional that it was his turn rather than Noah's. Yeah, and, and obviously as well, um, you, you potentially you're an injury or so away from Ben Davis having to come into the team, so you've got to to give them minutes to keep them ticking over. But you're probably only an injury away from um, Noah Stevens yeah. needing to come into the team. It is that balance. Um, it, it, it's as, as we say, it's hindsight, and you can you can look at it and think, well, we could have done this, we should have done that. We've not gone. We've not gone with it tonight. It, it may well look like a missed opportunity further down the line, but at the minute, you've just got to go with the fact that Ben Davis is probably the next one to get a shirt. And, and then obviously you, you have got better news this week. But Jake Wingfield's only going to be missing for a few weeks. So you're going to have him coming back soon um, to help that forward line. Um, in the back line, Wonga goes onto the wing. Um, I almost feel if you're going to have Wonga in the team wing is going to be the place for him to be um, he gives you a big presence he has got a bit of pace well he has got pace um, if you get him a bit of space if these dry tracks start rolling out um, does he leapfrog John Benison on the wing um, yeah I think he does for me and I think it is the pace aspect that, that we're looking for in that back line I think that that's the, the issue listen he's he's dropped one um, at like a kick in the second half no, first half, I think it was, down at uh, in the left-hand corner. That's going to happen. It's happened to... That's Tommy little... Tommy Makinson's dropped not many, but he's dropped high kicks. You've It just happens when you're on the wing. It's a, it's a risk that you're going to take when you're going up for a high ball. But you're right. I'm not going to read too much into a lot of performances there against that whole team. Um, but he probably does give you more of a threat if he's playing on the wing, especially if he's got Percy inside him. You know you've got a good defender there in Percy. Who I think he was one of our standouts as yeah, well tonight. Yeah, um, we've seen it. Lesson we said during the week again. We've seen that back line being called as it was. Apart, obviously the fullbacks move round um, because that's what we went with to start the year. I think that's like the first time since um, we've had a chance to do that. And when when's Wonga played well this year? When he had back to back games on the wing. At, at Hull, at Leeds in the in the cup, um, I'd like to see him probably carry on there next week. Now, um, if Lewis Dodd comes in, Jack Wells will be back to full back. John Benison, the unlucky man to drop out, maybe. He probably is, and he again he is unlucky to drop out. But I think you've got to go with the pace, haven't you? Um, I, I didn't. I didn't see even against that opposition tonight anything from John Benison which says he's your full back. For me, it's John. It's Jack Wellsby. Well, of course, yeah, yeah. Obviously, Jack Wells because Wellsby is going to be your first but choice to move him back but, there. Yeah, but um, Ben Hill's had a decent enough game yeah. though. Uh, Every, listen, yeah. everyone was terrible at the weekend. Everyone's had a minimum seven out of ten game at least there tonight. Yeah. Um, to, be, to be fair, again, put you on the wing tonight. You'd have had a seven out of ten. I'm not sure about that. Might have been you won, seven. You won, you won the drop. One goes drop. I'd, I'd, I'd have made. I'd have made seven meters off fourteen carries probably. Um, yeah, I think Benno's had a good enough game there at fullback to show that he can do it. And obviously, coming into the spine, when you change your full spine, he's tried getting involved in the line as well, in the attack, um, which is good signs because it shows that we're coherent a little bit there in making, hoping that he gets into the line. As I say, you don't learn too much, though, from your attack on, on games like that. There's still a lot of drop-off balls. There's still a lot of crash, um, like up the middle, a couple of tries where we've just run over defenders. You've just got to be professional in these games, haven't you? Um, good to see Moses and by. Get decent minutes. Um, man of the match in the ground tonight. I thought it looked really lively from the play of the ball. Again, poor opposition. Um but it's good to know that you've got someone who can come in and do that role. 
not only come in and do that role, but he's excelled in that role. He, I thought he was absolutely terrific. I thought he was absolutely fantastic. He jumped out of dummy half. He'd take the line on. He was quick in his um, in his possession. He, he is a good, good player, a really good player. I think you've got to look at him starting some games. Um, kicking ball in hand was, was good enough as well. Kicking to touch, he was you could, good enough. Could you argue... Daryl Clark's not done enough, and and this isn't a slight on Daryl Clark at all. He's not done enough to be having seventy minutes away for games, and, and Moses only getting ten. At the least, there should be a, more of an equal split in the playing time for the two of them. I think there should be more of an equal split, um, and that's nothing against Daryl no, Clark. No, that's no, just, no, that's just on the performance of Moses. Yeah, he's been, and I think that's because he's shone again. We're saying it against this whole team, and we, we, I think you've always got to quantify that. But he was quick, he was lively, he was trying to get out, he was trying to make things happen. He even slotted in at seven a couple of times as well. Um, yeah, I thought it's his best game in a in a red V. The best thing to come out of Hull tonight um, was the 350, 400 fans that he brought, um, because. They've known coming over that's what they were going to get tonight and they've still spent the two and a half, three hours on the road from East Yorkshire to come um, and stand on that away end and support their team and do you know what, terrific. I've had a message off a friend saying every single one of them should be given the freedom of the city because the... Or a ticket to watch all chaos. <laughs> the... the uh, oh, that's harsh, that's harsh. <laughs> At least they'll see some points. Um, the, the, as you say, travelled over here, paid for petrol, paid for a coach... Come over here a couple of hours, you've got to set out early, you're getting home very late, you're paying for your ticket in here. And what they're gonna what they're gonna want to see is a team just giving the effort. They've got a lot of kids in that team who aren't necessarily ready for Super League. I don't think the the whole FC tag give up either tonight. No, I thought they, I they, 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 st- they stuck with it. Yeah, and it, it's just the, the fact that they were playing pretty much uh, uh, well, they were playing a Super League team and they <laughs> are not quite a Super League team. Um, you've got a couple of uh, players who are like in obviously the lower numbers. So you've got uh, Macintosh and Houghton and Pele and people like that who are still there. But when you've got like numbers thirty-seven and forty out on the on the field and the young lads, they're not lads you've brought in from other clubs mid-season. It's a steep learning curve for them. But if they take one lesson away from that, it's the fact that they're not giving up and not to give up. Just to finish, at least in years to come, Kev. You can sit the grandchildren on your knee and say, say that you saw Pele play. Uh, yes, that's true. I have seen Maradona play, so it's nice to see Pele play. Who was better? Maradona, even though he was, he just stood in the middle of the <laughs> centre circle. Who's better at rugby league, Maradona? <laughs> yeah, who's a better prop? Um, yeah, done and dusted. Yeah, it, a professional um, result. Bigger test next week against oh, yeah. a, a Huddersfield team who've come back tonight and beat a terrible Leeds team. Yeah, I think it is. It's a, it is a bigger test, and the, the tests are going to keep getting tougher and tougher. Even like going across to Castleford or I mean Castle play Cast, it's a different type of test. But we've got Hull KR away as well. That's probably the one that you're building up. Yeah, to. We, we looked at we looked at the fixtures this week, and you look at the fixture list and you say eight out of ten you want to be winning, and. Hulk KR and Wigan away are going to be your battles. Yeah, and it, it usually is. We always say it's it's not the, the easiest place to go. Yeah, we've had some victories over there, but you've got to build and build through the season now. It's not just about, well, we score 58 tonight. Nice one, lads. We're done. It's got to be a case of you need a continuation of that, and we, we will have Lewis Dodd and Daryl Clark, you'd imagine, back in. Well, they've got to keep the shirts then now. They've got to show that they're the ones who should be keeping the shirts and, and why they're the, um, as we say, because Moses and Jack slotted into the halves have not had bad games tonight. Yes, indeed. So Saints have remembered how to score points. Um, joint top of Super League as it stands before Catalan and Hulk KR play tomorrow. Um, happy days. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and we'll be back next week for the Red V TV show. Catch you soon.